Hello and welcome back to Stories with me, Jesse. And today we're once again looking at the people who choose to have their actions placed on the scales of justice over at Reddit slash Am I the A-Hole. Let me know what you think of these stories in the comments as well as any suggestions you might have that we may just use in a future installment. Go with your gut, but we'll be sure to judge you for it, because we're getting started now. Our first story is titled... Am I the a-hole for changing my name? My parents named me Curse Style. Crystal? So my a-hole scumbag parents named me Curse Style, and my whole life I have gotten sh** like, are you a Muslim? What language is your name originated from? What country are you from? And people butchering its pronunciation, for obvious reasons. I have always told people to just spell it as Crystal, and my parents, mainly mom, would take huge offense to it and would email my teachers every year to make sure they pronounce my name correctly. My mom even grounded me once because I told people to just save my name as Crystal in their contacts. Now that I'm a legal adult, I got my name changed to Crystal, so now I don't have to deal with this f***ing bullshit for the rest of my life. Having this bullshit spelling and having to correct everyone every day was annoying as hell. And everyone before they met me would always think I'm some spoiled brat bitch when that isn't true at all. Your name affects how people see you. Much of it is subconscious, and having these bullshit spellings is not good. My mom lost her shit and started crying and threatened to cut me off for doing this. She said I betrayed her and our family by doing this. I'm pretty sure I'm in the right, but I need a sanity check here. I told my mom to go f*** herself and f*** her for causing all of these problems in my life and not supporting me and taking my complaints into consideration over my own f***ing name. My mom is a f***ed and my dad is a spineless coward. Whoa! I'm getting some harsh vibes from you. And I get it. It's a pretty bizarre name, to be honest. While I have my doubt that any parents want their child to hate their name so much, in this particular case, I don't believe you're the a-hole one bit. If you felt judged your entire life because of something so substantial as your own name, as a legal adult, it's well within your right to change it. The amount of pure hate you have towards your parents, however, I truly hope will subside with some time and understanding. What do the rest of you think? Feel free to discuss it in the comments. Moving on, our next story is called... Am I the a-hole for asking my wife's best friend to breastfeed in another room or to cover up? This happened a bit ago. My wife's friend was over at our house and we were having my daughter's birthday party. My wife's friend was breastfeeding her three-year-old son. We had a lot of people over, and I don't know what proper way of saying it, but when she was breastfeeding her son there were a lot of times where her breasts were just completely uncovered. Like she wasn't breastfeeding normally at all. Her son would walk away and she would leave herself exposed. I offered her our guest room that we have on the ground floor of the house if she wants privacy. I even offered her a towel. She insisted that she was okay. I told her I was like, hey, can you please do a better job of covering up? She flipped out on me. Her husband, without saying anything, just got their daughter from my daughter's room and left. I don't see myself as the a-hole here, in that a lot of people were uncomfortable. I don't have a problem with breastfeeding, really. It is just have some decency. Okay, okay. Now before I share my opinion, the Reddit community has weighed in to say that you are not the a-hole. Now I don't want to come under fire for sharing my thoughts on this touchy subject, but I am a firm supporter for breastfeeding not being shamed against, as it's completely natural and people shouldn't treat it like it's some strange taboo. That being said, at the age of three, children really don't need to be drinking it, as I feel that if a kid is old enough to ask for the booby, Maybe it's about time to hand them a damn sippy cup instead. But what do you guys think? I'd really like to know. Our next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not saving food for my boyfriend's pregnant stepmom after she commented about my ethnic food looking like poop and making the whole dish for her again? I'm a 24-year-old woman of Indian heritage and I've been dating my white boyfriend for the past three years. My boyfriend loves my cooking. I often cook Indian dishes like butter chicken, sog paneer, tandoori chicken, and chicken tikka masala for him. Back in mid-March, my boyfriend's father and his wife come to visit us all the way from Alabama to tell my boyfriend about their pregnancy. Of course, we had no idea that she was five months pregnant when they told us they were coming over. We assumed it would be a three-night thing, and then we'd go back to living our normal lives. 
Obviously, the situation changed, and they're now stuck here for a while. Truth be told, we were definitely not prepared for their extended stay. Now, I often cook Indian for my boyfriend, and I have a lot of spices and masalas stored in my kitchen, some of which I actually got from my ancestral village in India. Turns out his stepmom can't handle the smell of Indian spices. However, last night, we were basically like, f*** it. We have had enough and decided to treat ourselves to a garlic naan and butter chicken dinner. His stepmom and father were at the hospital the whole day, and I utilized that time to cook. When they got home, my boyfriend and I were just about to start our dinner. The moment she stepped inside, she scrunched her nose up in disgust and complained about our home smelling like curry. Then she asked what was in the menu. When I offered them to eat with us, she said she'd rather not as the food apparently looked like poop. I was legitimately angry at this point, but I wasn't going to lose my cool on a pregnant lady. Later in the night, she had a craving and woke me up from my sleep asking for leftover butter chicken. Oops, we didn't save any. She then ordered my boyfriend's dad to get her Indian food. The poor dude spent two hours out driving in the middle of the night looking for Indian food, but he didn't get any. When he came back empty-handed, his wife threw a toddler tantrum crying about wanting butter chicken. His dad then asked me to cook it for her. I put my foot down. It was four in the morning and I didn't want to spend four hours in the kitchen. His stepmom then guilt tripped my boyfriend about not caring about his unborn brother. WTF? Am I the a-hole? Oh my goodness, you poor creature. I think that I speak for all of us when I say that you are definitely not the a-hole here. Stepmother or not... Where does she get off coming into your home, policing your life, and complaining about your hospitality? I get that she's pregnant, and irrational behavior can come with the territory, but to bark orders and take cheap shots against you and her stepson is just plain rude and inconsiderate. My heart goes out to you for having to deal with such a lousy houseguest. Hopefully she snaps out of it and apologizes for her behavior. Our final story is titled... Am I the a-hole for telling my sister my cat is family, but her child isn't? I am single living alone with two cats and some fishes. My younger sister is a 23-year-old single mother of a 2-year-old with some medical conditions that requires some expensive treatment until, if, their condition improves and they grow out of it. My sister is like a child herself, too spoiled and naive for this world. My parents enabled her on going her own way, and she insisted on having the child despite being told the risks and having the man dump her over it, somehow believing that a baby would make him stay. She is now living with my parents, and my parents are providing for both of them. As for me, I moved out of the house years ago for my terrible relationship with my sister. I was the only one to scold her for her mistakes when nobody else would, and she always had our parents to back her up. Yeah, I am always the a-hole to them, and I don't regret leaving, though we still keep in contact. My sister came to me begging me for money, as my parents are now on a tough spot, and they have trouble providing for her child. They may need to switch to a cheaper but less effective alternative to treat them. I warned her that time that she shouldn't keep the child, but she insisted, and now it became like this. I need to provide for myself and my pets too, especially since one of my cats has some health issues. I refused to give my sister any money and she ended up bringing family onto the plate, saying how we should help each other in times like this. I told her that my cat is my family and her child isn't. I'm now regretting what I have said, but at the same time, half of me is telling me that she really deserved it. I am not her parent. Edit. All right, after a few hours of cooling down, I think I do need to fill in some parts that aren't left out intentionally, though I would prefer to leave out details because of privacy. Yes, my parents did show favorism towards my sister because she is quite a few years younger than me. She is the type who can be very sweet, needy, and clingy, so it wouldn't be far-fetched to say that helicopter parenting was part of it. As for my sister herself, while I don't think she's a bad person, she never grew out of thinking everything is rainbows and unicorns. She's used to having me take the blame for every trouble she stirred up. Thanks to my parents, who are just used to assuming it's my fault because I did not stop her from doing them. Responsibility is something she never learned. I admit I do bear grudges against her, against my parents. However, she still comes to me every time she needs something, 
oblivious about my feelings and just assumes that I have what she wants, only listens to what she wants. This is why we kept in contact even after I moved out. She came to me when she got herself pregnant that time and wanted me to help her sort out a plan. My advice was simple, abort it. Mind you, I also warned her about him before, and she brushed me off. She wanted to go through it, even after the doctors warned her that there were risks to herself and her child. I knew it wouldn't have gone well, so I tried to talk her out of it. Guess what? It is a precious life and a hope to bring her trash ex back. My warnings fell on deaf ears again. And now, after everything played out just the way I told her it would, she had the nerve to beg me for money. She is miserable, my parents are miserable, and here I am thinking I can never get rid of her and I'm expected to clean up after her again, just like before. Because why? We are family. F*** that. She is not my family. Not her, not her parents, nor her child. I know the poor child is innocent, but they wouldn't have suffered so if their mother hadn't made the wrong decisions again and again. Edit 2. I can't believe I need to say it. I believe I do not hate the child. I do want nothing to do with them, though. You are free to interpret it any way you want. Actually, this may just be a good time for me to cut them off completely. Sheesh, this is why I don't want a family of my own. Maybe for the better. A-holes like me shouldn't breed anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have our winner. You are indeed the a-hole in this story. Congratulations! How can you be so raw and unfiltered that you feel the need to bleed your sister's wounds faster instead of taking the high road here? I feel you for not exactly wanting to be used and dragged into a situation that you tried to warn her about, but attitude plays a bigger role than you might think, and you're being so cold, it's kind of making me sick. Your sister is an adult, and as such, it's not always on you to fix her problems, but take it down a notch. Telling her to abort her child? That is not your place, dude. I need to step away from this one, but I am eager to know your thoughts on this story. Anyways, that's about all the time we have for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again for tuning in with me, Jesse. What did you think about these stories? Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content, and check out what other stories I have for you. I hope each and every one of you has a fabulous day. Stay positive and keep chasing your dreams. I'll catch you next time.